one that uh, stands alone because it's hard. It's lonely. But you, we have the, the comfort and the joy of knowing that we are in obedience with you and your love for us. And so I got ask, oh God, and as I close this prayer, be with everyone who needs strength to stand. Let them not give in to sin nor suicide. But oh God, bless and strengthen each one of us. And in the name of your yes, precious Lord. Holy Son, uh, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you from Kansas. And we have another caller on the line. Uh, we hear a little bell ring when the person comes on. So, again, you are not required to identify yourself, but we do ask you to, if you would so desire, identify yourself by name and the state you're from. And uh, is there someone else that would like to identify themselves at this time? Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, Pastor and Adele, and uh, forget Don. Uh, this is Dan from Fort Worth, Texas. Dan from Fort Worth, Cowtown. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, everybody that knows me on this prayer line knows I tell lots of stories, and I'm a storyteller, and I have a story from Cowtown. <laughs> Many years ago, I was uh, stuck on stupid and uh, riding Brahma bulls. And I went to Fort Worth, and there was a bar there in town that said, we're going to have the first bull riding in a bar. And Mickey Gilly put a 2,000-pound Brahma bull in the bar, and he said, we need somebody to ride it. And I was just <laughs> dumb enough to do it. So I rode the first bull in a bar in Fort Worth, Texas, a long, long time ago. But uh, since that time, I've come to the Lord and... Uh, Seen the era of my ways. <laughs> but, Amen. Not only the era of my ways are going into bars, but the era of my ways are getting up on the back of a 2,000 pound Brahma bull. But uh, uh, anyway, we, this is a prayer meeting. This is not a storytelling time. I'll try to keep the <laughs> stories to a minimum if possible. But uh, when I, uh, uh, the reason I tell stories is because uh, when I tell a story about something, that reminds me, and I'll remember this uh, Fort Worth. Uh, Gentlemen, what's your name again, sir, from Fort Worth? This is Dan, uh, Dan Keck from Fort Worth. Yeah, Dan, all right. Now, we have uh, about a dozen people here in what we call the Upper Room Prayer Room. It's been called the Upper Room Prayer Time for 28 years. And uh, we're here in the prayer room. And if you would so desire any of you on the air, later you can go on your computer and go to thewileydrakeshow.com, thewileydrakeshow.com, and watch this as well as listen. But now, if you're on the telephone line, and you do put it on your computer, please mute one of them, either your phone line or your computer, because the phone line and the computer have a delay. So if you start talking, and you're watching, and it's picking it up on TV, you'll confuse both of us because there's a time delay there. But with getting the technical stuff out of the way, is there anyone else on the prayer line that has not identified themselves that would like to? <coughs> All right, uh, Brother Dan from Fort Worth, uh, please lead us in prayer and feel free to share with this prayer group. There's about 15 now, uh, telephone and television uh, wise and in here, boots on the ground, uh, lead us in prayer and feel free to share whatever prayer request or praise report you have in that prayer. But would you lead us in prayer from Fort Worth, Texas? Yes, that's right. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today as Christians, Lord, and we come today together to you to petition you, Father. To hear our prayer, we thank you so much for your mercy, God. Pour your mercy on us today as we pray for the restoration of Christian marriage throughout the country and specifically in our families. God, I have a huge praise. I, I want to thank you so much for my parents. They just celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary, God. Thank you so much God, for, for the shepherding that they have provided me in their faithful uh, one flesh, one covenant marriage relationship. And I just uh, I, I give the rest of this show to you, Lord, and I pray that your will be done. Amen. amen, amen, praise the Lord. And we do have, uh, like I said, if you're on the phone later, you can go back and you can see these people in the prayer room. I'm panning around the prayer room now, uh, and we have uh, Brother Dale over here and uh, 
Brother Don, and we had a privilege to be together yesterday in the prayer room as well as do some other things. Um, one of the things I also do, not only telling stories, but I have a I have a saying that I use a lot, and that is boots on the ground and prayer in the air. We're boots on the ground here in the prayer room. Those of you that are on the line are prayer in the air. And so we have another person that just joined us, prayer in the air. Uh, I heard the ding on the bell. So feel free to identify who you are and where you're calling from, would you please? Okay, I do want to share one prayer request, and you guys get your notes ready or your thoughts ready. But there is one uh, we were we're talking to uh, uh, Dan in Fort Worth, and I uh, want you to know, Dan, uh, we are on this program every day, and uh, we have a gentleman that is a correspondent for the Whitey Drake Show, and his name is Bill Wilson. And Bill Wilson uh, corresponds with us on a regular basis. He puts out a thing called the Daily Jot, and I would encourage you uh, to go to the dailyjot.com. Uh, when he does this Daily Jot, he writes about God. He writes about what's going on as it relates to our current issues, and I'm to give you now a prayer request from him, and <clears throat> this may be an exclusive on the Whitey Drake Show, I'm not sure. But uh, Judicial Watch, a uh, government watchdog group, has reported in the last few hours that the Islamic State, ISIS, is operating a camp eight miles from El Paso, eight miles south of El Paso, in the... uh, Anapra area near Ciudad Juarez and uh, includes a Mexican army officer and a Mexican federal police inspector. They also say there's another cell targeting the New Mexico towns of Columbus and Deming for crossing into the United States Judicial Watch says that a joint Mexican military police operation last week found Uh, Plans of Fort Bliss, Muslim prayer rubs, and documents in Arabic and Urdu. The area is controlled by the Juarez drug cartel, making such operations extremely dangerous. There's more uh, to this already alarming report about coyotes that are ushering people into our nation. So I want to ask one of the people in the upper room prayer room here if they would pray for especially uh, the problems on the Texas border there. So someone in the prayer room, lead us, please. Don't everybody be bashful. Somebody speak up. For uh, illegal aliens crossing from the border and all of this. Yeah. Father, we lift our voices to you. First of all, we thank you first for finding us worthy, Lord, to stand in front of you, being covered by the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to lift up your holy name, and Lord, we want to pray that you would keep your hand on this nation, Lord. Not, not that everybody will come to you, Lord, but, but that you would protect us, Lord, from the outside forces, Lord, that's trying to change this nation into something that it's not. Yes. Pray, Lord, that you would protect those border patrols, Lord, as they guard our borders, Lord, and open their eyes to what the truth is, it's especially from the White House to the outhouse, Lord, because there are so many that are yes. coming in to yes. seducing spirits, as your, as your word say, in the last days they will do. I pray, Lord, that you would teach them that this nation is risen under Christianity, Lord, and that they would know that we're not going to fall for it, Lord. That's we need right. to fight Amen. that fight, Lord, and we need to be salt in this earth. Let them know that we're here and for the purpose, Lord. Like I say, Lord, just guard our borders, Lord, and, and the federal agents that protect us. All these things I pray for in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Will Ruffin, for leading us in prayer, and we do want to continue to lead in prayer for those uh, that are attacking us. 
however clandestine it is happening. Uh, one of the things that we do on this program, I may have a gentleman joining us at any time. Uh, his name is Roger Angus from up in Colorado. He is the International Intelligence Briefing Officer for the Congressional Prayer Conference and the Wiley Drake Show, and he calls in with reports quite often. And this report didn't come from him, but it came from, quote, other sources. Mexican intelligence sources report that ISIS intends. Now, folks, we're talking about today, not something in the past or not something coming up. We're talking about what they're doing today on the 15th day, on tax day in the United States. They intend to exploit the railways and airport facilities in the Santa Teresa, New Mexico. That is a U.S. port of entry. We need to pray for the port of entry, Santa Teresa, New Mexico. And I know a little bit about Santa Teresa from history. You see, Santa Teresa is the name of the place, but it was originally called St. Teresa after a Roman Catholic missionary who opened a missions outreach there coming from way down in Mexico, coming up there to the border area to try to reach people for Jesus Christ. Her name was St. Teresa. They later made the town there in the port of entry, and it is now known as Santa Teresa. And so we need to pray for them. The sources also say that ISIS has spotters <clears throat> located in the East Portillo Mountains of New Mexico, and, by the way, they're largely managed by the Bureau of Land Management, which we know are not doing their job in protecting our nation, which is what they're supposed to do. But anyway, those are some of the reports. We'll share others with you as they come in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the firing line here. And I don't mean this to brag, but I'm here to tell you, folks, we're boots on the ground and we're prayer in the air. And what we do here every day in this prayer room, on this prayer line, and around our nation in Fort Worth, Texas, and in other areas as people call in, is really on the very battle front, fighting the devil. Now, they can call themselves ISIS. We can call ourselves the USA. All of these names are important to identify. But the most important thing is God has called us to fight the battle against evil. Now, if there's anyone else in the prayer room or on the prayer line, uh, you just have to sort of blurt in. This prayer line goes from one extreme to the other. We get several people on it, several people in the prayer room, and everybody wants to talk at once. <laughs> and then everybody, uh -huh. everybody decides to be very polite, and nobody talks. So somehow we got to find balance there. And so please don't be bashful if no one's talking. When I hush in a minute, uh, feel free to just jump in there. And uh, if you step on somebody verbally, just back away and let them go ahead. But anyway, it is prayer time, folks. I ask you now, please, someone, lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come before you right now, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you bless this prayer meeting that we're having right now. Bless everybody here. And just watch over all of us. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is an important prayer meeting. Uh, it's important to God. Yes. And a lot of people say, well, why is bragging about his prayer meeting? Why is bragging about his prayer No, no, I'm bragging on Jesus. This is Jesus' prayer meeting. I just have the privilege, and you have the privilege, uh, to be involved in it and be a uh, warrior on the battlefield. And I do not consider myself in charge. Uh, but I am a general. God called me to be a shepherd to the flock. Jesus is the shepherd. I am just one of the under-shepherds. There is another under-shepherd here uh, in the prayer room with us, and I'm going to put the camera on him, and that is under-shepherd James L. McCullough. I want to ask him if he will lead us in prayer. Go ahead, brother. Gracious Father in heaven, Again, we come before thee, Lord God, recognizing, Father God, that we as people in this nation must turn to you and trust you each and every step of the way. Amen. Thank you, Father God, 
for t taking us by the hand and leading us in the direction you would have us to go in. But Father God, we pray that those that you lead will be influenced in such a way that they too will be examples to others in following you. And that, Father God, that they will take a stand. We have too many, Lord God, that are not willing to stand up for what you said is right, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that you open their eyes to the truth, that they will be able to see, and that, Father God, strengthen their limbs, that they'll be able to take a stand in the mighty name of Jesus. Then, gracious Father in heaven, I say a special prayer for each one that's gathered here in the prayer room, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for their strength and well-being. And, Father God, the things that you've laid on their hearts to pursue, to open this nation eyes to this world, that, Father God, we, that they will have the strength to continue on and the finances that are necessary to go forward in this nation, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for this facility. Thank you for the opportunity of, for those in the community to come and we're able to assist and serve and show our love toward them, Father God. Now we ask, Lord God, that as we continue to take a stand, that, Father God, you just open the doors that we will know that, Father God, it's not us, but you working through us to make the difference. We thank you for Pastor Wiley and those, Father God, that he's able to make contact with. And we thank you, Father God, that those that we come in contact with have a response and recognize that we're doing the Lord's work here in this place. So, gracious Father in heaven, continue to give us the strength to run on. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Hitchhiker. On Friday... Hitchhiker and I will be boots on the ground, not in Buena Park, but we'll be boots on the ground in Memphis, Tennessee. We'll be boots on the ground for Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom will be going on here at the church and the synagogue here, but we'll be boots on the ground uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, starting Friday, and we want you to pray for us. Now, do we have anyone else on the prayer line that would like to lead us in prayer? All right, no one on the prayer line. Anyone else in the prayer room here would like to lead us? Sorry. Lord, thank you again for another day. Lord, um, I ask that you open my eyes to things that you want me to do. I feel you calling me every day, and um, I know that I have things to do, and I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the ones that are here today, and about the marriage, these men that are standing up for you, Lord, for what is right in the Bible. Lord, I ask that you, I pray for the, the borders and everything to keep us safe. You know, um, they have a tough job and some of them are crooked and it's all about the money. So I ask that you watch over them and take them away, Lord, and just bless everybody. Amen. Amen. All right. I want to ask one of our other leaders here, uh, Brother Peter Maxson, if he'd make his way into the prayer room, come up in and have a seat. Uh, Brother Peter Maxson is uh, the administrator and the uh, guide for one of our special ministries and our special ministry under the Congressional Prayer Conference is one called First Responders Prayer Team. By first responder we mean military, police, fire, paramedics, etc. So uh, Brother Peter is coming in and we need you to pray for him. He's fighting some physical ailments, uh, like many are. and uh, But Brother Peter, would you uh, lead us in prayer, please? And after you close your prayer, please give our listening audience how they can reach you, your email, so they can communicate with you in reference to our first responders prayer team. So Brother Peter, look right here at the camera, please, and uh, lead us in prayer. Uh, Father, we just thank you uh, in your son's name, um, and we always ask for prayer for those that put their lives on the line. Yes, uh, just recently, we had a uh, lieutenant from um, Sacramento that what, fell through the roof of a burning uh, house. He happened to be up in the garage, and just some of the things that some of these officers, firemen, that they 
do are just incredible, uh, the heroics that you read about. Yes. So um, we just ask, Father, uh, and ask that you continue to add to the numbers, too, as well. Um, right now, I have 750,000 police officers and firemen that we pray for, with uh, a little over 5,000 departments. Uh, well, we just ask that you be with them all, including the DPW crews, the, including the guys that work on the traffic lights. Many people don't, don't know or have no comprehension that some of these guys get electrocuted or suffer from serious burns and shocks. They go out there when the weather is, is just horrible uh, to ensure that the traffic runs smooth. So, again, um, we're always asking for prayer and we thank you in your son's name. Um, and if you'd like to get a hold of me, my email, uh, I, I'm going to say it very slow, it's my last name. Uh, it's Emma's and Mary, A X A N T, and then it is 03241955 at gmail.com. The 03241955 it happens to be my birthday, so it's my last name plus my birthday. You can email me uh, if you're out there listening, you're a law enforcement officer, you want to add your department to the of the roles, uh, I encourage you to do so. All right. Thank you, Brother Peter. God bless you. We appreciate you sharing that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the upper room prayer room. Uh, this prayer time is very, very important. Anyone else in the prayer room that would like, please feel free to lead us in prayer. Uh, when you lead in prayer, when you're in the prayer room or on the prayer line, for the benefit of those of us listening, it would help us to know first name or whatever, where you're from, but it would also help us to uh, know how we can pray for you. Uh, so you might add, hi, this is Dan from Fort Worth. Please pray for me, and by the way, and then lead in prayer and do the same thing here in your prayer room. Anyone else on the prayer line that would like to pray for us or with us? All right, we're back to the prayer room, and uh, so anyone else in the prayer room, if you'd like, go right ahead and lead us in prayer. I'm Don from Washington State, and I would really appreciate prayers, not just for me and my wife to be reconciled, but um, a host of, of people standing for their marriages all across this country. I was just out jogging this morning. My son and I will be running the 26th time together in a local race when I get back to Spokane, enjoying the uh, great uh, early morning coolness. Amen. And uh, just thinking about the, all the different ministries that are involved. And we all have a passion in different areas, but what's the underlying thing is that God loves us and he sent his son to take our place in death. So I'd Amen. just like to, to praise God for that and lift up the needs. In others' lives. Thank you. Please. Lord God, I just thank you for um, for us to pause and think, Lord, you've give us, given us yes, each a passion in certain areas, yes, Lord, Lord, and you've given us gifts and you've uh, directed mm -hmm. and guided us, Lord, whether it's serving <clears throat> meals to the homeless or standing for marriage, everything in between, Father. But help us to concentrate, help us to remember every day that the bottom line is that God loves us. And Jesus came to take our place in death, that we might have eternal life with God the Father. Lord, help us to keep that in mind as we minister in other people's lives. Help people see yes, that we don't just uh, go around and uh, say that God has all these rules to follow, but we lead people to understand that there is a God who really loves them. And the reason that we need all these rules. It's not because we've got a spoil sport God who wants to punish us, but we have a God who loves us, yes, designed Lord. us, knows how he's designed us, and knows how we need to live so that we have yes, fullness Lord. of life and so that we can have eternal life. So I just ask your blessing upon all those people that are standing, Lord, and the passions that you've given them, and ask you to bless them mightily this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. And... Uh... 
Brother Don and Brother Dale are traveling around the country, and they we have the privilege to be their host for a few days, and uh, we're praying with them and for them, and uh, I'm going to take them down to a very historically spiritual, significant place. One mile from here is a place called Independence Hall. Many years ago, Walter Knott, who was a man of entrepreneurial talent and a businessman, had a little berry farm out here, way out here in Orange County. And uh, it was during the Depression that he and his wife set up a little stand. He got a little table from his wife and set it up out here on Beach Boulevard. Put a little sign up there, handwritten sign that said, Blueberries for Sale. And that was the beginning now of a many, many year Second largest amusement park in the world now, second only to Disneyland. But I believe that happened not because only Walter Knott was entrepreneurial, because you see in those days very few folks had very much money, depression time, but a few of the people in Hollywood, because they were in showbiz, had a little money, and so they would take trips. They would drive the highway. It wasn't a freeway then. They would drive the highway out here to Orange County and pick up another highway called Highway 39. Later was named Beach Boulevard because it runs 10 miles south directly to the Pacific Ocean. And so they would come out here. That was the best beach, still is. Uh, that, uh, and they would come to the beach. And so as they would drive by, they'd see that sign. And they had a little money, so they'd stop and buy blueberries. Well, that went on for some time, and uh, Brother Walter Knott was glad to do it. And one time, a couple of movie stars and uh, their friends, a carload of them, stopped and said, we want some blueberries. And so they bought blueberries. And, and then they said, well, we're hungry. We want more than blueberries. Do y'all have anything to eat? <laughs> Don't you sell anything else? And Walter said, no, all I got is blueberries. <laughs> and uh, uh, so they said, well, we're hungry. Where is there a restaurant? Of course, there were no restaurants anywhere near here then. And a McDonald's hadn't come out yet. And, uh, and so uh, he turned to his wife and said, well, hon, didn't you have some chicken left over last night? <laughs> and she said, yes, I did. And he said, well, go get that chicken and feed these folks. Hospitality of a godly Christian man. And so they brought the food out there, and the people said, first thing they said was, boy, this is great chicken and great biscuits and so forth, great gravy. And uh, he said, oh, I got a good cook. And he bragged on his wife, and, he, and they had finished eating, and then they said, how much do we owe you? And he said, oh, nothing. But his wife was a Proverbs 31 woman, and his wife wasn't greedy, but his wife knew even selling blueberries, they were still struggling during the Depression. <coughs> And she said, well, honey, just, just tell them to, you know, give whatever they want to give. <laughs> and they overheard her, and so they gave, I don't remember now. Uh, I've heard this, I heard this story, by the way, not from a book, uh, not from uh, another person, but I heard this from the very lips of Walter Knott. Yeah. And he said, the guy handed me a $5 bill. Back then, that was a lot, I'm sure. During the Depression, a $5 bill would be like a $50 bill now, or more, maybe a hundred or more. Yeah. But anyway, uh, he, he said, well, thank you, and they went on their way, and they came back again and again, and pretty soon, Walter and his wife sat down and prayed about it. What should we do with this? And he said, we need to have a little place set up where we can serve chicken and call it Mrs. Knott's. Country Fried Chicken. Well, there's a restaurant there. I'm going to take these guys over there today, and we're going to pray at Independence Hall. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to leave them there, and I'm coming back. But they're welcome to go over to Mrs. Knott's Country Kitchen and have chicken and, and biscuits, whatever they'd like to do. It's going to be a little bit more than $5. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah. so. <laughs> Price has gone up. But at any rate, um, that's the story of Knott's Berry Farm. And... Uh, I heard that story, uh, like I said, from Walter Knott himself, because back in 1964, I was a student just up the street here a ways at Biola College, Bible Institute of Los Angeles, started by a man by the name of J. Vernon McGee. Many of you hear him preach every day from heaven. 
on a tape recording. But uh, he uh, started that school, and I was a student. They moved the school out here from L.A. to La Mirada, which is just up the street. And as a result of that, God answered their prayer. It's a great university now. This is an example of what God can do with people who are faithful to work and to pray. Those two things. And God blesses it. Well, I was a student at Biola College. And they signed me up for a class called Evangelism. Evangelism 101 how to tell people about Jesus. And they would, we had a class twice a week. And on Friday, our teacher would say, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the class. Let's have opening prayer. Somebody lead us in prayer, and she'd lead us in prayer. And she'd say, now, I'm going to pass out these gospel tracts. We're going to, we prayed over these tracts, and I want to, I'm going to have the, but the school bus here at Biola, drive you down to the amusement park, not Spear Farm, and I want you to go through there, and as you see the tourists, pass out these brochures. And so that's what we would do. One, one day a week, we would go to not Spear Farm. In those days, it was free. You didn't have to pay to go in. You could just walk in. But there were a lot of people there riding the stagecoach and the roller coaster, and so we would walk around and give them a track. That track was one of those very prayerful tracks of days gone by. It was called the Four Spiritual Laws. Many of you remember those and using them. Well, we would do that, and one day I was there walking around, passing out my little booklets as I was instructed to do, and held accountable, by the way, by my teacher, because she would say, when you come back, tell me how many brochures you passed out, how many people you talked to, and what the results were, if any. And so I was down there that day, passing out my tracks. And a gentleman walked over to me and said, Good morning. And I said, Good morning, sir. And he said, How are you? I said, I'm absolutely fantastic in the Lord Jesus. And he said, Me too, brother. I love Jesus. And he said, My name's Walter Knott. I own this place. And I said, Well, praise God. And he said, Are you a berry picker? I thought he was offering me a job. And uh, I said, well, no, sir, I, I guess I'm not. He said, oh, I thought you were one of the berry pickers. And he said, the teacher up there at Biola sends her class down here, and we call them the berry pickers. They're passing out tracks and picking souls for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe you were one of those berry pickers. I said, I am. I am a berry picker. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, tell me, explain it to me. So that's how I met Walter Nod, and I grew to love him and like him and uh, get around him a few times. And every time he'd see me there, he'd come over and he'd say, uh, he'd call me a little pastor. I was a very young guy then. He said, little pastor, go over there to that stand and tell that woman to give you a hot dog. And the next day he'd say, tell her, give you a hamburger or whatever. So I would get free food and free admittance to Knott's Berry Farm and had the opportunity to share with people and pray with people yeah. at Knott's Berry Farm. And uh, Walter was a collector as a Christian. He loved patriot things and he loved uh, not only patriotic things, but he loved historical things. And he went out in the deserts around here, around Southern California, and found that there were a lot of ghost towns towns that had dried up because there was no gold or no silver. And they would go in and put in a little church or put in a little bar or something, and they would uh, start a town. And then they'd run out of money, and, uh, and so they would leave and just leave the town behind. And that's what they call a ghost town. You got something, Brenda? Oh, no. Was, oh. Yeah. Uh, that was called a ghost town. And so Walter found out that uh, those ghost towns didn't belong to anybody. And uh, so he would go out there and get a crew and a truck and take the jail or the saloon or whatever down and bring it back here and put it in his amusement park. And when you go there, that it's called, it used to be called Knott's Berry Farm and Ghost Town, and it still is. Uh, <clears throat> now you have to pay to go in, but uh, in those days it was free. But... One of the things that he also, and he found, he found a beautiful, beautiful 
church at one of those ghost towns. And he said, we need to take, they took that church down, took it apart, and it is at Knott's Berry Farm. And when you guys are down there, you can go and see the Church of Reflection. There's church there every Sunday morning. And it's been going on for years. And uh, Walter Knott's indeed was a, a mighty man of God. Yes, Peter? Well, um, we have a, kind of an unusual story this morning. As you know, I like to report on the strange and unusual, especially when it deals with law enforcement and firemen. Uh, this is coming out of State College, Pennsylvania. A five-year-old boy noticed a squirrel's nest 30 feet in the air up in a tree and decided he was going to climb because he wanted to see them babies and he got stuck up in the tree. Firemen were called. The chief of the fire department decided he was going to climb the tree too to go see the nest. And while the two of them were up there, the fire chief made a um, decision that all this little boy needed was a little bit of encouragement to climb down by himself without the use of a ladder. And the two of them climbed down together and made it okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's our God. That's our God putting his hand on a little boy uh, through uh, a first-time responder. All right, let me uh, turn the camera back around here. Good morning, Genevieve. Welcome to the prayer line. Good morning. And we're going to take you over here now. Uh, did you have something you wanted to share? Yes, I got a special prayer request. It's praise and prayer. Amen. Okay. Well, share it with us, brother. Well, I wanted you to know, uh, Brother Wiley, when you were speaking about Walter Knott, they, the thing that inspired me through all of that was the praise and the appreciation that he gave to his wife. Mm, yeah. yes. Now, the Bible tells us that men are to be meek and quiet, too. Yeah. To dwell with their wives to, according to knowledge, to listen to them, and give them honor Amen. or yes. value to their lives. It says if they don't do that, then their prayers will be cut off. That's right. And if is. a man is married, he's cut off from God if he mm -hmm. doesn't honor his wife. You know, the first order, I just don't want to just preach. But no, just no, that's this. okay. Uh, the first order of business that God made with creation, and still in creation, Amen. Uh, was making a woman for the man, That's out right. of man, from his heart, so that man would have, feel like he had something really beautiful and precious <coughs> with him, and that was woman. And so we ought to, I feel like my wife, even though I've missed her for so many years, is beautiful and precious. She has social grace like no other, I, I believe. And she has a quiet and sensitive voice. What a mm -hmm. precious, beautiful little girl. And uh, the other side of what I stand for here, because I usually uh, am for people that are standing for their marriage. I understand the pain, and I try to be an encouragement. But on the other side of the coin, there's some failure we make as men too. Amen. And that is not to honor and glorify women. We must do that. Amen. We must make them feel special. You have, you have women around here that have made a complete transformation in life. That's salvation. Amen. That's getting saved. That's being Amen. transformed. That's having Jesus come into their life Amen. and identifying with him. So I'd like to pray both for men and women that we would honor women. Amen. And that women would be honored because so much of the trash we see going on is because women are dishonored. Amen. Well, Brother Dale, lead us in prayer, would you please? Heavenly Father, first of all, we want to thank you, praise you. You're such a glorious God. We, we know of your love. We know that, Lord, if we, we approach you and seek you, that you'll draw nigh to us, that you'll give us a special love and a special grace in our lives. We want to be perfect, Lord, in heart. We know that in person, pretty hard. But, Lord, you can purify the heart as you did David. You can cleanse it and make it free. Lord, yes. make men cleanse so that they will honor their women in their lives. They want to just take advantage of them. We know that women want to please men. They want to be attracted to, uh, have men attracted to them. That's just the way you made us. That's the way it is. And so help us men to see women as beautiful, precious, and, and in your sight. And help us to see their, 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 their true role and what great glory and honor they give to our lives. We know women that are just being used of the Lord in mighty ways because there aren't enough men out there that will be godly. Help men to be godly. 
by yes, the way they honor their li- wives and the way they s- listen to them. Yes. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers, so much for uh, sharing with us, Thank especially you. as men and for the women. And uh, one of the things that uh, we are very pleased with is the women that we have that work here in this ministry. And I want to ask uh, someone on the line or on the, uh, whoops, you're shaking the table, brother. No. <laughs> I'm moving. Uh, right now. It's okay. All right. <laughs> That's okay. No problem. Uh, but the reason I bring that up and sort of piggyback on your honoring the women is that we do this prayer time every day at 9 o'clock California time. That's 12 noon in Washington. And uh, next week, uh, I am going to be uh, boots on the ground, prayer in the air, the last week in the month. This next week, Hitchhiker and I are going to be gone. In Memphis, we've already mentioned that. But I want you not only to pray for us as we travel on boots on the ground, but I want you to pray for especially Brenda and her sister uh, here at the church, uh, Frankie. Because uh, we're going to be, we're going to split. <laughs> we have a church split, guys. <laughs> we're going to split this effort uh, next week. And fact of the matter is, right now we are, as I said, broadcasting on Congressional Prayer Conference television and radio network by telephone. And uh, I'm also here in the prayer room as pastor. Now, uh, starting next week, uh, are starting in a few days, uh, I will be on location somewhere, either in Memphis or in D.C. Brenda and Frankie will be here opening up the prayer line to the radio station and also communicating with us by phone. And so they'll be doing that. And this is all new for them. They're learning to do the technical part. And it's uh, we need your prayer because I'm not very technical. And for me to lead somebody is... Sort of like the old proverbial blind leading the blind. <laughs> but uh, they're doing a good job, and, and they'll be doing a good job. So pray for our ladies, especially, as they uh, work in the prayer room. Hitchhiker will be here some to help, and so will Peter and others. But uh, primarily the responsibility every morning at 9 a.m. or at 12 noon, D.C., uh, these ladies, these two ladies especially, will be responsible. So all of you uh, pray for them. Uh, any other prayer requests that anybody would like to make here in the prayer room? Folks, we've got about 10 minutes before we go off. Uh, anyone would like to share a prayer request? You don't have to pray, uh, but if you want to just share a request. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, it really got me emotional. I was thinking because, like, my life the way it was and stuff like that, and my dad not respecting my mom and not respecting us women, you know, and the things he would always call us, you know, it wouldn't amount to nothing, or it was just just wrong, and um, I I just wish that, you know, we could put everything like God first every day, and our parents, too, to teach us the right things, because later on, like me, just learning from all this, and I I, I asked us, like, wow, you know, I wish I'd known this as a child, and my parents taught me this, Mm -hmm. because my life would have been so much different, you know, and I'd probably still be married and not divorced, and all that other stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, we really just need to bring this, the Bible and the values back into the family. So Amen. They their children. Amen. So their children are taught and not, you know, abused the way they are, you know, because even though I'm 52 years old, it still hurts me that my dad, my own flesh and blood, would just say the things he would to us girls and treat us with no respect, even to this day, as he knows I've changed my life. But, I have to learn to let that go because Amen. it is really still bugging me a lot. Yeah. And even every time I see him, I'm like, I, want, I love you, Dad, you know, but nothing, nothing from him. And it really still hurts, you know. And well, amen. Really and we can, we, can, we can all only imagine the hurt that you're going through because it's not us, it's you, and it's not our family, it's yours. But we can certainly relate to that. We've all been hurt by family members, and we do want to pray with you and for you. And by the way, as I mentioned before in reference to our schedule, we are going to be in Washington, D.C. And I'm not saying that just to advertise, but I want to sort of piggyback on what Brenda's talking about, and that is the importance of family and the importance of marriage 
in yeah. the family. I'm going to Washington, D.C. to be on the steps of the Supreme Court for a full week. I'll be there praying. And again, people are going to say, well, why did he just bragging about, you know, what he's done? No, I'm asking you and telling you so you can pray. And the reason I'm going is our Supreme Court is on the throes of making a decision that will destroy marriage. And so I'm going to the steps of the Supreme Court to let them know that I and you and we are praying for them. And we're praying that they will not destroy marriage by passing a law in this country that allows two men to get married or two women. That would be so devastating. And so we're going there to pray against that and to pray for them. Because you see, the very thing that Brenda was talking about, the disrespect yeah. that men have for women That's true. is because men, and I'm not just picking on your dad, any man that disrespects a woman, it's because he's disrespecting Almighty God. Amen. God gives us a principle even when he talks about the poor people. He said, when you abuse the poor, when you disregard the homeless, and when you treat them badly, you're treating God badly because he created them. And when you as a man mistreat a woman, disrespect a woman, whatever you do, you're doing it unto God. That's right. And so we pray uh, for your dad, and uh, not just to pick on him, but we pray for him and pray for other men who would follow in those kinds of disrespect. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the prayer room. We've got Brother Gary here with us. You'll see him on camera, and Brenda, and uh, Peter. Uh, you always see the top of Peter's bald head uh, when, <laughs> when he's in the prayer room because he's busy on his uh, uh, phone. And then we also have Genevieve. Genevieve, good morning. God bless you. And you saw the hitchhiker before. And here is Don Johnston again and Dale. And uh, anyone else in the prayer room have a prayer request, praise report you'd like to share? Before we do that, though, is there anyone else on the prayer line that would like to share a prayer request with us? Please, please do, brother. And there's no such thing as hogging. This is communications, brother. And uh, okay. help us communicate with God. Let us agree with your prayer. Go ahead. Okay. Dear God, I um, I so dearly and uh, truly, with tears in my eyes, ask for the restoration of every marriage out there, and yes, mine especially. And for you to take and put your hand on our children, mm. protect right. them from all the things that happen in these broken yeah. homes. I ask you, O oh God, to take and uh, and uh, I see it in my my children that uh, they uh, they're picking up on the scriptures, but help them to stay true to the scriptures yes, on remarriage. Right. Because you know, uh, as we grow older and the things, we need someone to take up the uh, torch uh, and to have uh, and to go forward. And I ask that all our children will stay true to you, O oh God, and they will stay true to them. They will stay true to your. Uh, Remarriage, because we know that your uh, your uh, uh, your scripture on on marriage and against remarriage that they are a picture of, of how how faithful and how loving that you are that we uh, no matter how deep we've sinned and no matter how deep we uh, go that you're faithful that when we backslide you're faithful like the prodigal son the prodigal son knew better oh God but he went out and he tore the heart right out of his father mm -hmm. he stole away the uh, riches from his father and he. But, oh, God, the Father, every day, lovingly reached out. Oh, God, help our ch to, to not only do this for our, our spouses and, and for you to return them as you returned the prodigal son. But, uh, oh, God, put this in the heart of our children. That, yes, and, Lord. That, you know, should something happen to Brother Wiley and something happen to me, that our children will go and they will carry the torch. Yes, Lord. Uh, I see it in my children, that, that, uh, the seven-year-old son who, who says, Daddy, God... Uh, uh, God approves of remarriage, but only when uh, only when uh, your spouse is dead. And I see this, but oh God, we need them to be able to, to remain faithful. There's so That's many right. things that will yes, Lord. between now and uh, adulthood, uh, reaching out to tear our children away from the Christ and away from these values that we're teaching them. Hmm. And we need them to remain uh, yes, yes. solid in your holy word that that, uh, that they might carry the torch when we're gone. And I ask these things that you'll be glorified, not uh, not. 
not that I'll be glorified or Dan will be glorified when his spouse comes back or, or that anything, but that uh, you will be glorified in that your model of marriage and that your mirror with, and reflection of your love for all mankind will be uh, shown uh, in your power. And uh, I just ask these things that you and your uh, your uh, picture of love, uh, your love for us will be uh, glorified. Amen. 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 Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Prayer in the Air communications line. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us, Boots on the Ground, here in the prayer, Upper Room Prayer Time together. And I want to say thank you to the Lord Jesus because he gave me a beautiful wife for 48 years, one month and 14 days before she graduated and went to heaven. And I thank God that 28 years ago, her suggestion that the Holy Spirit led her to give to her husband, and I, at least at that point in my life, had enough sense to listen. And that was, uh, she said, we have an upstairs room. And uh, she reminded me of the scripture of where the disciples were so blessed by being in the upper room. Yeah. She said, why don't we start an upper room prayer time? And so we did 28 years ago, and God's been so good to us. We've seen so many people rebuild their lives. We've seen people get blessed. We've seen all kinds of good yeah. things happen. We would remind you that tomorrow morning at 12 noon, Washington, D.C. time, or 9 o'clock California time, and if you're in the other time zones, you can extrapolate out the time. I told somebody yesterday, until a couple of years ago, I didn't even know what extrapolate meant until I started dealing with all the different time zones. Uh -huh. So, thank you so much. God bless you, and have a great day. We're going to go off, and by the way, if you'd like to come back and hear any of these prayers again, you simply go to the Wiley Drake Show and click on Archive, and it will be up there shortly. And in a few minutes also, it'll be up on YouTube. So God bless you. We'll be back tonight with our regular Live at 5 discussion and dealing with family issues in all respects mm -hmm. of the family, not only the remarriage deal and other subjects like that, but we'll be here at 5 o'clock, uh, live from the First Southern Baptist Church. And we thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. Have a great, great day. And uh, I want to tell Brenda, Brenda, go ahead and hang that phone up, and that will take us off of Crusade Radio. And uh, we thank the Lord for the opportunity. And, uh, Father... We commit this show to you today, and uh, we thank you. We're going to title the show today the word His Story, H-I-S-T-O-R-Y, History. That'll be the title of the show today when you look on the archive. Good day. God bless you. And remember, our motto, Scripture, Micah 6, 8, Matthew 23, 23, do justice, love mercy, and walk with God. Good day and God bless.